Guys, check this out. We had six inches of snow yesterday, which you can pretty much see some left yet. But I was in town today because I had to pick up my mail. 60 degrees in town today. I couldn't believe it. Up on the top of the mountain here, it's 45. But even so, 45 degrees in the middle of February. So, <laughs> this weather's unbelievable. But anyway, I had two comments that I wanted to answer. Um, one of them was about what do I think of 5G? In other words, the 5G phone networks. Let me put it to you like this. Um, when they had 1G, 2G, 3G, and all that other stuff, all that is is just a new little thing to help the phones do one of two things. Either be able to make longer distance phone calls or um, more phone calls on the same line. In other words, the band is bigger, a bigger, wider band. Now, I'm not a radio guy and I'm not here to tell you I am, but I'm saying that's what the 5G represents. Uh, it's just gonna be additional, like say 1G was an analog line, um, 2 or 3G when they got to that started to become digital and that's, you know, we know digital's a lot better. So right now 5G is not everywhere that you can buy a phone. 5G is mainly AT&T, Verizon, and a couple of other places, but that's about it. Yeah, you can see how much snow we had here. I didn't do any shoveling here yesterday, except for right on the concrete there. So anyway, as far as the G goes in the comments, you know, it doesn't affect me either way. I don't go crazy on it. I mean, I'm not out there trying to buy 5G stuff. I just need to replace my phones that would no longer work. That's, you know, the problem. And one of the reasons for that is because um, TrackPhone uses Verizon and AT&T lines. And if they're, uh, if they're you starting to implement 5G, track phones won't work all over the place. And I have to tell you right now that the track phones that worked here around my property very well no longer work. And the brand new ones don't work. So a lot of good 5G did us. So anyway, that's my opinion of that, not to get too crazy over it. Now in the next couple years, like say three, four, five years, 5G ought to really mean something good. But as far as I can see, all it is is for the electric company or for the uh, internet companies to just get more money and sell more phones. That's all it is. That's what they want. Okay, so with that said about 5G, listen, the other day somebody had said something to me about the uh, um, sawmill here, and I just want to make a little bit of a comment and explain something. Um, they had said to me that when we're cutting, we're raising and lowering our saw blades, our, our, our saw head, too much. Well, here's the thing. If you put a log on the saw, <coughs> and you run the saw head down over top of it and you make a cut, there's no reason why you can't pull the saw head straight back on top of that log that you just cut. In theory, there's a couple of things that make me not want to do it. First of all, if you cut, let me just throw a four by four here for a second. Okay, so here's what I want to explain. So you take the saw and you run the saw blade down the end of the board. Now this is a short board laying on here. I'm only using it as an example. But let's say the board is 12 foot long, okay? And you're all the way down here with it. You know, from say here, let me just back, there we go. From say all the way down at this end, here, all the way up there. Sometimes when you cut off of a, a log, the log warps. It bends a little bit. I'm not saying they all do, and I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying they do at times, sometimes. So that means that if you bring the saw head all the way down to the end here, and you try to pull it back, and the log warps, you're going to hit the saw blade and knock it off the saw. I've done this already. That's how I know it happens. Okay? So that's one thing. That the one reason why, why I raise the saw head above the cut. The other reason I raised the saw head above the cut is because when you're taking the saw back, 
when you take the saw back, I just want to hold this part back here a little bit. When you're taking the saw back on this side, right in here, because this side is where the stops are, right on this side is where you'll gather sawdust. A lot of it on top of this blade. And what I found out is if there's a lot of sawdust on top of this blade and the blade's in tension, it has to pull on the blade to go underneath here and it's technically throwing this up in the air so you're not getting a straight cut or throwing it down either way. And you can see what I'm saying here about how that has hit this. You can see it hit right there where my thumb is. So that's another reason that I wind the head up to be able to bring it back. So I take the saw blade, the saw uh, mill, all the way down to the end of the board. I crank it up at least an inch, and then I take it back, and then I reset the thing, um, the head. One guy was saying to me that he thinks it would be a lot quicker if I just pull it back and then went down one inch or whatever. I'm not saying that that's not quicker, and maybe it is. What I'm saying is that you end up catching the blade on something. Even if you have a crack in the board, like let's say you're cutting and you have a split, the blade can easily grab a hole of some of this in the back and once you pull the blade forward it'll jump right off of the pulley wheel and then you know the blade could hit something, you're gonna damage the teeth and that's why I don't do it. I tried all that stuff with these trying to figure out which is the better way to cut and the way I cut I feel for myself is the best way to do it. I'm not against anybody else's way of doing it I'm just saying for me this works the best and when somebody asks me how to do it that's why I tell them to do it that way because it just works out better. So anyway that's just you know, I'm trying to answer that comment about uh, not taking the head so many times up and down. But it doesn't matter. I mean, once you know where you're at, the one ni nice thing about the LT-15 with that plate for the uh, hand gear to go up and down with it, once you know where you want to be, it's very easy to move this thing in sixteenths. And you tend to learn that very quickly, you know, where to go with it. So. I actually like this thing and I like using it the way I do. Um, I had tried a couple of times just running it back on top. If you run the blade back on top of the board, it takes the dust off of it, but you're also wasting the, the uh, teeth on the bottom part of the blade are getting uh, duller because they're hitting the board but the top one isn't. And when you have one tooth dull in, on one side and one tooth sharp on the other, it's just like a chainsaw. It tends to cut on an angle then. And that's not what you want with these saws. So anyway, that's my answer to that comment. Um, I'm not against you doing it. If you can do it and you don't have any problems, then be my guest. I'm just saying that I have brought them back already on all the wood I've cut. And I have gotten caught on cracks. I've gotten caught on... Uh, warping boards and I've had the sawdust throw the blade in um, down low enough to hit the um, the the metal edge that's on the wheel housing there so that's why I don't do it and to me it works better so anyway guys that's uh, the answer to that comment so have a good one <laughs> believe it or not tomorrow we were supposed to have a snowstorm that's crazy I was just in town and there's no snow only only piles. There's no snow at all on the grass. It's gone. So I guess we're lucky being up here on top of the hill. Have a good one, guys. When I left here this morning, the temperature, or not this morning, but I left at 1 o'clock. It's about 4 now. At 1 o'clock when I left here, it was 100 degrees in there. Right now it's 80. But the... Uh, uh, relative humidity is fairly high. Oops, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like it's 60%. But it's probably because there's so much water coming out of the ground into the air that's evaporating. But anyway, this these boards are still coming nice, though. It's going to be good when it's all done. I also had my tractor running today to make sure this thing was going to run good in it. It started right up. Have a good one.